let's just bless him. Give him your praise. We bless you, Lord Jesus. You alone are worthy, O oh God. You're worthy of our praise, and you're worthy of our worship, and you're worthy of our gathering together to honor you and to bless you and to, to seek you and to come to you, O oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the worthy lamb, and that you have redeemed us, and you have purchased us, and we are covered in your blood, and we are protected by your word. We are surrounded by your angels, and tonight, Lord, we rejoice that we belong to you. Thank you. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Bless you, Lord. Just take a moment and tell him, Lord, I believe you're worthy. You're worthy, Lord. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's sing that one more time. If we could just close your eyes and raise your hands and just think about how worthy he is. Think about the lamb that was slain for you to purchase you from hell and sin and self and everything else that can bind us. Worthy is the lamb. Let's give him more praise. Let's sing it again. Worthy is the lamb. And you may be seated, and uh, I have a few very important announcements, some of which have to do uh, with the whole crisis that our country is going through and uh, the corona uh, pandemic that we're working our way through. And so there are some things that apply to us as a church, and I want not only to inform you, but I want to ask your help. Let's get the word out on these things. We need maybe all of us to pick up the phone, call, uh, phone and start calling and, and notifying people we know and love and let them know, hey, the church is open. And we have a great privilege. We really do have a great privilege to come together in a dark time and seek the Lord together and make a difference because of seeking the Lord. Uh, let me just give you some information that I think you will find uh, pertinent, but I also want to give you some encouragement this is not a time to be afraid. This is a time to see God shine. This is a time to be used by the Lord to help people that are being gripped by fear. And so this is a time, I believe, uh, that God wants to use the church in a great way. And, and what, what the enemy might have meant for evil, God uses for good. Don't we believe that, that all things work together for good? Don't we agree with the words of Joseph when he said to his brethren, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good, as it is to this day to the saving of many. And so I believe as we reach out to other people and share the love of Jesus, especially during this time, this can be a great time for the church. Well, let me give you some information. Riverside County Health Department has issued an order, and uh, we are uh, complying with that order. Uh, the order simply states that every church group uh, that is 250 people in attendance or below can continue to meet. And so since we're spread out over three services, 
uh, we are free to continue to meet, and we're going to continue to meet. And it is a safe environment here for you to come in. There's been a lot of work done, people disinfecting and doing all the precautionary things that need to be done. And I want to encourage you uh, to not only come to church, but get on the phone and, and encourage us, hey, we can gather, we have this uh, right, and we don't want to lose the opportunity to come together and seek the Lord together. There's something powerful that happens when people seek the Lord together. But anyway, Riverside County Health Department has issued the order that there will be no events uh, allowed uh, above 250 people. Now, they also gave some uh, regulations, we'll call it, for faith-based or what we would call church. And some of those affect us in a very minor way. I know some of you will feel inconvenienced. Some of you are going to be bummed out that you don't get a donut. But here, here are a couple of the regulations that just that you should be aware of. We are disinfecting the facilities uh, regularly and repeatedly, and, and we believe it is a safe environment. They have actually asked us uh, not to encourage uh, greeting with handshakes and hugs. Now, I was hiking today, and, and, and or yesterday it was, and coming down, I saw a good friend of mine. He's a good guy, and as I saw him coming up, I was coming down, and I said, hey, I don't know how you want me to greet you. You know, because everybody's so uptight, do we shake hands? What, what do you do? And he said, well, I, I'm greeting people like this. And so he had to do the fist bump and then the elbow bump, and then he wanted to do a foot bump. And I thought, you know, this is no longer about corona. This is just weird. This is just getting weird. But, you know, it is awkward. You come in church, well, are we supposed to shake hands? Are we supposed to hug? The health department has asked that we reduce that kind of contact. So I know this is going to sound corny to some of you. But I, a lot of people do believe I'm corny, so it's okay. I know that a lot of you think this is going to be corny. So instead of shaking hands for a while, instead of hugging for a while, let's do this. You can either wave at each other, even though you're just a few feet apart. But here's what I would encourage you to do. We'll, make, we'll have some fun with it. Why don't you give each other the thumbs up? Just get, let's let, let that be our sign, our greeting. We're going to give the thumbs up. The early Christians used to draw fish in the dirt, right? That was their secret sign. Well, we're going to give the thumbs up. And what is that going to remind you of? It's going to remind you that everything's okay. It's going to remind you that everything's all right, that everything's going to be all right, that God is still in control. Everything's all right. It's thumbs up. All right, I know that's kind of corny, but we're going to be coming to church the next few weeks, and people are going to be wondering, how do we greet each other? Well, just do the thumbs up, all right? So there you go. And the, the, the Riverside County Department of Health, and I, I've kind of coined this phrase, but they have asked us to not have common food. All right, so... Don't have food out that everybody's partaking of at the same time. Don't have food out. And so there you go, guys. You're going to have to buy your wife something to eat on the way home. You can't depend on the donuts after church for a few weeks because we're not going to be doing it. We want to be in compliance so that we can, in good conscience, say, hey, we're doing all we can do that you've recommended that we do. And so there's not going to be uh, common food. Now, that does mean the teenagers won't have their their lunch. They were going to have a delicious corned beef uh, St. Patrick's Day lunch, but that would be common food, so we're not going to do that. Uh, but we are still going to continue our worship services. We are going to continue our prayer meeting, and I, I, want to, I want to encourage you, it's time to pray. You are needed in intercessory prayer. This nation needs us to pray. This church needs us to pray. This valley needs us to pray. It is time to pray, to get serious about praying. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. So we love other people. We want to help serve other people and reach out to other people. And he's given us power, and that power is released as we pray. And then a sound mind. We want to be wise in what we do. So yeah, we're going to disinfect, and, and, and we're, we're not going to be passing donuts to each other. and We'll do those things. But we're not going to panic because God has not given us a spirit of fear. As a matter of fact, we should see this as a very exciting time to be a child of God. A very exciting time to be a part of the church that is going to win in the dark days as we reach out to others and as we share with others. Take that bullet and look on the back of that bullet. And each one, reach one. A simple way of sharing Jesus with other people. There's people that are scared now. Share Jesus with those people. And so let's believe that God is going to use us in a very mighty way in these dark days. We don't need to hide out in fear. It's time to believe that the Lord is greater 
and greater is he that is in you that he, than he that is in the world. And I'll give you a couple of scriptures to be praying over your families with. We already know all of Psalm 91. Be praying that over your families. Also, how about Exodus 23, 25, where the Lord says, as you walk in obedience to him, he said, I will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness out of your midst. Man, that's a powerful passage. And you read Revelation chapter 8 about a, a group of people coming together to pray. And John had a vision of this incense arising up into heaven and, and the prayers of God rising up into heaven. And when th this rose up into the presence of God, it literally caused the response of God shaking the earth. And I believe as God's people rally together and pray now, we can make a difference even in this whole environment of fear and, and viruses and panic and all that is going on. So please, uh, let's keep spreading the word that we are having church, we're believing God together. Let's gather together to pray and believe that God is going to use us. Here's one other thing that I thought was very, very uh, encouraging. President Trump, I don't know how many of you saw this, President Trump today just issued that tomorrow should be another national day of prayer. He is calling on us as a people to pray. And let me read his words. President Trump declared Sunday, March 15, 2020, as a national day of prayer. And he says, it is my great honor to declare Sunday, March 15th, as a national day of prayer. We are a country that throughout our history has looked to God for protection and strength in times like these. No matter where you may be, I encourage you to turn towards prayer in an act of faith. Together, we will easily prevail. Those are the words of our president, and we want to do that praying. At the end of our service tonight, we're going to take a few extra minutes to just pray here together uh, for our country, and of course, we'll be praying tomorrow in our services uh, for our country as well. So, sum it all up. Uh, we're going forward. We're continuing to meet. Uh, we're believing God for good things. We're available to pray for you in any way that we can pray for you. Those of you that uh, you cannot come, and I'm saying this guy, I know we're going to put this on the web. Those of you that cannot come because you are, are close to someone or a caregiver of someone that has a compromised immune system and it's not wise for you to come, we are posting our messages. We'll try and get them on the web uh, by later in the day on Monday. We're also putting this worship time uh, on our website so that people at home can go to our website and begin to worship. And you can still hear the word. All right, so we're moving forward. We're believing God. And uh, we are optimistic about what God is going to do in the